Welcome back to Senior Support on your TV. Today we're talking about stroke and the impact it has on people and their families. And our guest is Lorraine Pyle. Lorraine is with the Stroke Support Services Program of Hastings and Prince Edward Counties. And Lorraine, you've brought another guest along with you for the second half of the show. Oh, thank you very much, Debbie. Yes, I have brought uh, this amazing young stroke survivor. His name is Sean Weisma. He's going to hopefully share uh, an incredible story of survival um, following stroke. Um, he is one of uh, the folks that I go to regularly to help me uh, dispel these myths um, that uh, having a stroke is an old person's um, health crisis. And that is just simply not the truth anymore. Um, there, the number of uh, younger people between the ages of 20 and 59, 60, um, having a stroke are uh, alarmingly increasing. Uh, nearly 20% of all hospital admissions for stroke are people in that age category, which is makes it even more important that we drive home this message about knowing the signs um, and acting fast um, with stroke. Um, I'm very happy to introduce Sean. Um, are you ready to take it over for me, Sean? Well, Sean, thank you so much for being willing to come on the show today. I think it's so important for people to uh, meet meet a person who has had the experience and is willing to talk about the journey. So if you could just uh, share with us whatever you're willing to share, Sean, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. Yeah, certainly. You know, thanks for having me here. It's been a big part of my journey, sharing my, or sharing my story with other people and survivors. So. I've had my stroke in 2019, so just four years ago now. Um, I have full left side neglect, so I, my left side is fully paralyzed. Um, I'm living independently on my own in the community with help of programs like Lorraine's and finding resources through that. Uh, I lived in Kingston when I had my stroke. Uh, recently, I'm a bowel guy, so I moved back to I'm now getting involved in the community here, and it's a great community. Um, and there is definitely life after stroke. They weren't sure I'd ever walk again, and I'm walking and helping other survivors, and we're trying to make it a big family around here. Well, Sean, uh, thank you for telling us that. Is is it possible for us to tell for you to tell us a bit about the circumstances of having the stroke? Yeah, so for me, I had, uh, it was kind of a hard way to identify for me. I had, I was prone to migraines as an adult, and I had had a headache for a week, which wasn't out of the ordinary. This one at the time seemed to linger a little bit and be a little different. So I went, called my doctor, went in, went, had his uh, imaging done, and they noticed there was a bleed in my brain. and admitted me to the hospital right away and unfortunately I had a stroke in the hospital that evening and I was in ICU for a week and then five months in a rehab hospital in Kingston and walked out five months later and my journey's been going every day since. Yes, that, I, I know how difficult rehab can be by watching my dad um, I, I think uh, you heard me say in the first half that my dad had a stroke. That rehab, you, you just have to bring a lot of, of commitment to that, um, it seems to me. Um, is, that, is that your experience? You just have to just have to do it to get to get back what's possible. Yeah, it was a lot of work. It's still a lot of work. It's I made the best of it. I'm a fairly positive person, so I had a enjoyable time with it and with my therapist. They're all there. They want to help you. They want to see you succeed, and I put in as much effort as they did or matched it and beat it, and 
there's definitely you want something you got to put the work in for it but it's definitely possible you know i i heard maureen say that before you uh, your stroke you were very active and and uh, an outdoors person climbing mountains and things like that so you certainly know how to put the work in yeah, no, I've spent a lot of time in nature hiking, and yeah, a month before my stroke, we, my family and I were down in the Adirondack Mountains, we did a seven and a half hour, hour hike up a mountain, so I was definitely in shape. I'm not the stereotypical, uh, you know, old person that's having a stroke. Um, you know, I was 47 when I had my stroke. Uh, I'm 50 now, so, you know, it's a new new education like not a lot of my friends never knew what a stroke was until i had one you know my parents friends did you know it was more of an old person disease so there's i'm doing a lot of work with young survivors in the community and we're branching out to neighboring communities to find other young survivors to help them in their journey and unfortunately the stroke is like you know i'm sure your dads and people we know in the community every stroke's different so by having a community at Lorraine's helping us create and her, their programming, we can learn tips and tricks that we've found successful and share them with other people on their journeys. Yes, uh, every, every stroke, every person is different and, and uh, how they approach the rehab and the, and the life afterward, for sure, absolutely. Um, Lorraine, it seems you've got a, 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 a real advocate here in Sean to help you with, uh, with other stroke survivors. Oh, absolutely, uh, Debbie. There's no way that I can drive home the message uh, even remotely as close as Sean can. Sean can uh, encourage and empower other stroke survivors you you heard yourself how positive he stays and he has a very powerful message that it isn't just in the early months after a stroke you always have to work at um recovery recovery is possible but you have to continue to work hard at it and uh if if you know two three four five years down the road you're not making any gains by continuing to stay active and engaged, you're maintaining what you've already worked so hard to get. So, and, and nobody can say that better than you.